Hi, hello everyone. My name is Bernardo Sim and I'm a writer for Pride. Um, today I will be speaking with Kevin Bacon and Carrie Preston about they slash them. Um, Kevin, you've had an extremely prolific career. Uh, what attracted you the most to this character and the script? Um, I, I like the idea that you're going to take something uh, as horrible as the, the concept of gay conversion and and uh, put it in a very accessible genre, meaning horror, which a lot of people really love and, and the stakes are very high. It's, it's, it's life and death and it sometimes has the possibility of tapping into something in a pop culture way that, uh, you know, a, a, a dark little drama might not be. So I thought that that was a really interesting idea. And there was this great character for me. And, and so I, I was, uh, it, was a, it was an easy yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Carrie, um, I'm not going to lie, your character probably scared the most, <laughs> uh, scared me the most in the entire movie. How do, you, how do you approach playing such a terrifying character like that? Well, I mean, it is uh, the, the crux of the film, really, is that the horrors of, of this gay conversion. And so to to see the, the practices that, that my character does and Kevin's character does, um, the movie doesn't work if you don't have that, you know? So um, I'm, I'm, it's always my mission to be a, a part of, of stories that, you know, bring the LGBTQ story front and center until it's, you know, just as common as any other story about the human condition. And so, you know, this spoke to me in that way. It, it fit my mission in that way. And then um, just the writing is just Cracker Jack. You know, uh, John Logan obviously <laughs> knows what he's doing. And um, and I was excited to be a part of his directorial debut as well. Um, but as far as playing the character, you know, you just try to get into the skin and figure out why somebody would do something so horrible. And then, you know, talk to the director, work with the other actors, and then, you know, you end up what what with what's there, but the, it was on the page to begin with. Kevin, as a straight actor who was drawn to playing this character, is part of you hopeful that certain parents will watch this movie and think twice before sending their LGBTQ children to these horrifying conversion camps that still exist out in the world? Wouldn't that be just the greatest win if 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 it happened to one person? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I yes, 100%, that would be, absolutely fantastic and then hand in hand with that um would also be young people who um have a different gender identity who can see themselves in this film maybe they are in a small town and you know rural rural america in a conservative world with conservative parents maybe they're closeted bullied whatever it is to be able to see people like themselves um, up on the screen and empowered is also something that we hope would be a would be a beautiful um, uh, result. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Carrie, a lot of people fell in love with you as Arlene on True Blood. That character made a lot of mistakes, but people always felt like she was coming from a good place. Did you approach this character in a similar way and try to understand why she does what she does in order to play her? Or was it just hard to understand her at all? No, I think, you know, um uh that's our that's our you know goal as actors and that's our job as actors is to try to you know figure out why these people do what they do you know and 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 in the case of arlene you know she she really ended up having a great arc you know she started off being such a closed-minded person and and her mind kept getting opened up it, it, with cora um she's pretty much ha has her mind made up you know um she she's a, a licensed trained you know therapist who you know believes these things and she hasn't had that moment where she snapped out of it and thought well this is a horrible thing that i'm doing i think she really thinks that she's saving these kids and that is truly horrifying theo you play an incredibly badass character you literally have us rooting for jordan the entire time um what drew you to what drew you the most to playing this character Ooh, oh gosh one thing <laughs> Um, well, I've never really played a lead before. This is kind of the first, like, I've, I've been in ensemble casts. I've done, like, big supporting stuff and, you know, uh, like, I've done serious regular stuff before, but I've never, like, been somebody who's really focused on and featured in a film. And that was intimidating. Um, 
but I was excited and I was like, I deserve this and I deserve this challenge. Um, and also, I was really excited to play a character whose gender identity is more aligned with mine. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is that I played characters who are more mask than I identify as in real life. And so that kind of felt like I was able to break out of that, that you know, idea um, that a lot of people I know kind of have of me, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, I felt very empowered by getting to play the character as well. And I really felt yeah. like I got to bring a lot of myself to it. Um, so it was great, great challenge. Austin, I was obsessed with Toby, also the entire movie. <laughs> uh, this felt like it was a very fully realized performance. Uh, I wonder, was it challenging to play such like a warm and lighthearted character in a horror movie? Um, I wouldn't say that it was a challenge to play the warm, the warm hearted, but it was a challenge to go from zero to 60 from like, very, very, very happy-go-lucky to completely. Right. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that was that was a little bit of a challenge, um, but I, but ultimately, like I learned so much just from playing that character, because you know he is just so proud and just so out and so does not care. He's eighteen. He about to graduate. It's over. Send me my, you know, and he agreed to go here to. Get get to New York. His parents are gonna send him to New York if he can just make it through the week. Um, and I mean that he's smart. He's cunning. He's conniving, um, and, and he knows what he's doing. So uh, yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun to play somebody that's like that because naturally, naturally, it took a minute for me personally to get to a place of like acceptance. But like, <laughs> I'm I'm fully out. What are you talking about? Seeing <laughs> Toby honestly was like you like made him so three-dimensional like oh right. seriously yeah i'm seriously right. oh, yeah it's a it's a character that could easily fall into a certain archetype and that's why i pointed out that it was very fully realized and that's why what i liked the most yeah wow, this person you. had layers Good. like oh my seriously gosh. yes <laughs> yeah. uh Scott, uh, we're in an era where audiences are craving more movies centered around LGBTQ characters. As a producer, can you talk about the challenges of putting together a movie like this? Well, you know, the, the challenge was more in the past because when you know we had Blumhouse who was well I mean let's let's hope it continues right um, you know I was like how is this gonna happen but we already had Blumhouse behind us and with a juggernaut like Black Blumhouse how you know how could we fail Peacock comes along right the way that the way that everyone everyone involved in this uh, was so for it, chose this because of the LGBTQ content, not despite it, right? Didn't see it as a liability, wanted to celebrate it. Um, you know, I feel like I somehow managed to be right on the tipping point. Um, and I, what I really hope is that the success of this film, and this film will be a success from the writing to the performances, you know, Absolutely. to the way that the audience is going to receive it. I hope this sends a really clear message to Hollywood that we need to let our actors be out. We need to let our queer creators come through and we need to tell these stories that haven't been told before. Absolutely. Theo. Yeah. 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 Theo, we can't give anything away, but Jordan's message to anyone watching this movie is very powerful when the story concludes. Do you hope that some people will walk away from this movie with a different perspective or having learned something new, perhaps? Absolutely. Um, depending on who the audience member is, I would love if people could feel empowered to be themselves. I would love if people who maybe have echoed some of the really phobic statements in the film might be like, oh, I see how this affects queer people. Maybe I should think about this. I want that to change. Um, I also want people to take non-binary people more seriously. Like, you know, there's obviously been a little bit of press around the film already. And like, I have already been harassed by people online about my pronouns. And I'm like, fuck that. Like, I, I want people to see that like I'm a human. And that people who did, you know, people who are like, I don't use he or she pronouns, I use something else. Like, I really want us to be taken seriously. And I also want yeah. people to feel entertained. And I want horror scholars and people that are obsessed with horror to just eat it all up. Cooper, you play a character who's very on board with going through conversion therapy, but there's a complex journey along the way. Uh, what was your process for capturing those nuances? 
Um, well, I think it's something that I really could relate to because I've been through it myself. You know, I didn't want to be who I was when I was growing up. And I think it took me going to acting school to really kind of realize that if I want to be able to play other people, I have to be able to be myself. Kind of like what RuPaul says, you can't love yourself. Then how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. amen. So that was something that I, yeah, I just, I really could relate to it. And it was, it was something that I... I've experienced myself, so I knew exactly how to kind of get into that space. And while it was very cathartic and challenging for sure, um, it was also very healing and, and beautiful for me to kind of get to go through it. Sounds good. Um, Oi da hui to the bank. Hi, how are uh, you? Very busy. To do There is so much more to your character than we initially assume. What was the challenge? Was that challenge what drew you to playing Gabriel? Uh, I was so happy to just have the opportunity as a Brazilian actor to play, you know, a character with such a range of emotions. Um, so the challenge for me, I think, was honor John's writing and and make him proud of, you know, when he invited me to do this, that I will do a good job. Yeah. Well, you did a great job, Brazilian. <laughs> Both Brazilians, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, nice, you're Brazilian. Yeah, Brazilian born and raised. I, I saw you in the novellas. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Monique, uh, I felt like Veronica was a really interesting character because she exuded a lot of strength and a lot of confidence while also showing a softer side of herself. What was your favorite part about playing Veronica? Um, you know, she's so different from me in real life and she was the embodiment of what I wish I could have been when I was younger. So it was just really nice to almost fit myself into that glove. And um, she's definitely rubbed off on me. I mean, minus the haircut, but just to, <laughs> you know, just to uh, learn how to be confident in my sexual orientation and just be unapologetically myself. Um, she's definitely rubbed off on me in that way. That is so awesome. Yeah, she's definitely who we, who I wish I was at that age. Yeah. Uh, Anna, you play another character who starts off very interested in not being gay anymore. Uh, was it hard to play someone who's like literally questioning her own identity? Yeah, it was really, frankly, quite painful. Um, you know, as an actor, there's no way around it. You have to go through it. You know, um, it was a lot of soul searching, it was a lot of research, um, you know, it was a lot of sort of digging back into my own past and sort of harvesting, you know, what it feels like to be closeted. And um, I think for me, my goal as an actor when I go into any role is that I just want someone who's watching the movie on the other side to feel seen and to relate to the character and go, oh my God, that's me. Um, and the, the film's not even out yet and I've had a couple people share that experience with me and that it's the most rewarding thing I could think of. And so I'm, I'm really excited to have had that opportunity and I'm, I hope that she is a, I hope our relationship is like an iconic queer relationship mm -hmm. in film because I think it came out so beautifully. And, and I also have to give props to Monique because you know, like Kim she did all the work. I don't know what she's talking <laughs> about. Veronica. Kim's Veronica. Kim's story doesn't exist without Veronica. So ship Veronica. <laughs> yeah, what's the ship name? It's Veronica. Veronica Kim. Vim. Veronica. I am Veronica Kim. <laughs> sounds like a robot. Veronica's <laughs> hot. Uh, this this is a question to all of you. Uh, do you think that this movie might have a positive impact on the family members of LGBTQ kids who might still think, the, the parents of these kids, who might still think that conversion camps are good ideas? I, I think we can only hope yeah. for that. Yeah. I that mean, hoping same. that, you know, people who are, aren't a part of the community, that it, it creates a new sense of empathy because um, that's what we can do with storytelling. Um, and hopefully, yeah, their their lens and how they see the world will change after they watch this film. I think it's great that Absolutely. we're also on Peacock. We can you can watch it at home, mm -hmm. so you it's don't accessible. have to. Yeah. It's really accessible to anyone. I think yeah. that my hope would be for family members who see this movie. I would hope that they understand that it's a lot more dangerous to try to change your child than to just let them be who they are. John, we know your work from Gladiator, Skyfall, The, a the Aviator, um, Penny Dreadful. You have an incredible range as a writer. What attracted you the most to writing they slash them? 
You know, uh, it's very personal to me because, you know, I grew up loving horror movies. And when I was a kid, like, gay characters in horror movies were mostly non-existent. And when they existed, they were killers or they were victims or they were jokes. They were never heroes. Right. And that's bothered me for years. I've always wanted to write a story in my favorite genre where queer characters are the heroes. So that's what I wrote. Yeah. And this was your first time directing a full length feature. What was your experience like as a director for this movie? Yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, I was I was very well supported by, you know, Blumhouse and Peacock were very supportive of first time director. They gave me time to rehearse with the actors. They gave me extra shooting time just so I could like do the job well the first time out. Uh, and it was great. You know, I've spent my life as a dramatist, both in theater and movies, uh, working with actors. So I was very comfortable with that part of it. The technical part of it, you know, took me a minute to sort of figure out. But, you know, honestly, I grew up on film sets with Marty Scorsese and Oliver Stone and Ridley Scott. So I've seen how the beast functions when it functions well. And I just tried to uh, function well. Yeah, and you've worked with some of the best. So that was a great yeah. lesson for sure. Uh, one scary aspect of this movie is that a group of queer people are in a conversion camp. But then there's this other scary element in the movie that is a little more unexpected. How did you approach balancing out these two storylines in the movie? Mm. Well, I started with the kids. I started with the, the seven campers and my affection for them and wanting to build them into heroes. And I built sort of the horror superstructure around that, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. And certainly using every slasher movie trope I could possibly think of, from the camp in the woods to the masked killer, you know, I just to different weapons, you know, so I was trying to enjoy the tropes of the slasher movie while I was still like pouring my heart into these kids so we could see them sort of rise to uh, to triumph. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say that working on a movie is like being in summer camp. Well, this movie features a really horrifying summer camp. Um, but in reality, uh, what was your experience like working with such a diverse group of young actors? It was it was incredibly joyous because they were so generous. You know, I'm 60, I'm not non-binary, I'm not trans, so people were very generous with their experiences of what it is to be a queer person now, a queer kid now, what it is to be non-binary or trans or both, what it is to be African-American as opposed to we have a Brazilian actor. So they were very mm -hmm. generous and it was, and it was a, a, an open communication between the actors and myself in terms of shaping those characters. And in a weird way, it was like summer camp because we were at these two little camps in Georgia, a million miles from anything, and it was just us. So it was it was it was weirdly fun, even though we were dealing with some tough uh, tough material. Yeah, that's actually a perf perfect segue to my next question. Uh, this movie has a diversity of queer stories, as you mentioned, when it comes to sexual orientations, gender identities, and even like backgrounds and, and race. Um, and it's awesome how each of their individual experiences are explored in the film. Was your writing informed at all by people you know in real life or perhaps by the actors in the cast when it comes to these different experiences? Yeah, both, both. I mean, you know, I work in the theater, so I know a lot of queer people, you know, and, yeah. <laughs> and I know, you know, trans people, non-binary people, but it was mostly these actors because once we dialed in on the characters, they were incredibly helpful in terms of language, their experience, how they responded to the world in a way. And I was utterly open to that because I wanted it to be as authentic as possible to these kids in 2022. And so it would feel, it would feel modern and contemporary and real for them. And they were, they were so generous with their time. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, would it, do you think that one of your goals in making this movie is that a parent that may be considering sending their kids to these horrible conversion camps might potentially change their mind or second guess their their? Yeah, I, I hope so. Look, you know, so-called conversion therapy is monstrous. It's torture. Monstrous. And, it, and it's legal in half of these United States. And there is no way assaulting a person's individual character and identity is a good thing. There is no way a human being emerges better for being destroyed physically and psychologically and their very essence being questioned and attacked. It is monstrous. And if in any small way our film can shine a light on that for some people, then, then that would be glorious. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. You too, Bernardo.